Welcome everyone. I'm Laura DeFranco, the CEO of Brave Healer Productions, where we have a mission to wake the world up to what's possible. And today to help me with that mission, I have some of the amazing authors of a new book that we have coming out called Holistic Mental Health, Calm, Clear, and In Control for the Rest of Your Life. How's that for a subtitle, you guys? So before I introduce these amazing women to you, um, I want to say a huge thank you to Laura Mazada. Laura, we wouldn't be here without you for this particular book, and you know I was excited about this topic. We have really been needing this book, I think, for a while. There's a lot of people struggling, and I'm really excited about diving into some of the questions today with these author experts and talking about this hopefully in some ways that our listeners gain some perspective that they just didn't even realize before, right? That's game-changing. That's life-changing. So uh, let me introduce you. I have Cassandra Quick with me. She's a holistic psychotherapist and founder of Illuminate Counseling, where she helps women holistically heal trauma using body-based approaches. I have Katie White with me. She's an intuitive energy guide that just by being in her presence, you will feel your most radiant self. I like that bio, okay? <laughs> that is awesome. Pam Vulcan is with us, and uh, she's reminding us that we are mentors for the children in our lives, helping them glow as they grow. I also love that so much. Oh my goodness, the power in my Zoom room today is super awesome. Okay, so Cassandra, you're going to start us off today. Uh, tell us about the amazing chapter that you wrote. So I have had this uh, story in my head for a long time, and I have had this desire to tell it. And Laura found me, Laura, uh, you know, obviously uh, the project is just incredible. Um, I, I started to talk uh, a, a bit about my background and my thoughts about starting to branch out from this larger project that was in my head and what could really help the public or people who are attracted to our project and our book, what could help them the most? Because there are so many different things that I have learned in my life uh, from different experiences. And I really, I, I try to just sit with it and meditate. You, you gave a great, uh, wonderful approach to writing that I personally have learned from you. So I appreciate that. I know that like that's part of the journey of this, this wonderful book. And um, I sat with it. And it just started flowing out of me. And so really the inspiration is from my life experiences after a divorce. Um, it prompted me to change parts of my life, to explore parts of my life and dig deeper into myself. So into my soul, into my body and just find what was working for me to heal. Uh, I do have a history, personally, that I, I speak very openly about, and that is a history of trauma myself. And of course, I think a lot of us who are in my line of work and in the line of work of all the fabulous authors that we have here, uh, it comes from a place of wanting to help. And, but we have our own stories that lead us to where we are in our lives professionally. And so that, that was the motivation to get started and to tell my story. So I love that. Thank you for mentioning um, the process. I think it's been really, it just makes me smile and yay for you. And <laughs> I'm so glad that you felt the flow with right. the connection because that's exactly what I hope people will feel. I have a kind of a specific question for you. You know, Laura and I joked a little bit about this book in the beginning. Um, you guys, you may not have known known it, but I told her I felt like it was a miracle that we got you all together to say yes to this, especially those of you who were licensed therapists, because I, we had so many no's 
in terms of, I don't know what, like not wanting to be authentic and vulnerable and sharing the stories and everything. So I just wondered, Cassandra, how that was for you and how did you, did you say yes? Like, yeah. Uh, well, I would very much love to tell that story because it, when you say that, it just lights me up. And so when she reached out to me, she actually reached out to me uh, on Facebook Messenger. And I immediately, I'm very connected to my intuition. I just immediately knew. I just knew. And I, I have people reach out to me occasionally here and there. They want to work with me. They want me to join their groups. You know, these these kind of um, cold messages, so to speak. And it was just different in the way that Laura reached out and it energetically felt like the right time. It felt like the right time. It felt like the right person. It felt like the right process and the group. And it just was good energy. And uh, I was drawn to it. And it was one of the easiest yeses that I have said in a very long time, because I am, I, I tend to be, well, I am thoughtful and mindful in what I choose to bring into my life and what I choose to put energy into. And this was a project I immediately knew that I wanted to put time, energy, and thoughtfulness into. So that, that was my process. And we are very glad for that. <laughs> um, can you give us just a little teaser of the practice you're sharing in this chapter? Ooh, so uh, one of the things that I've been blessed with recently, and specifically professionally, but I've experienced in my life different body-based approaches that I work with, my, I've worked on myself in, in my own process and with my clients. And so what it is, it's, it's kind of a blend. I'm going to be very thoughtful about the teaser part of it. <laughs> <laughs> so it's a blend of connection and calm or connecting to whatever emotion is coming up for you in the moment um, and creating a sense of connection from your thoughts and your feelings to your body and being able to move through that in a way that is empowering and helps you connect and to build this practice into your daily life in a way that can really help it become a habit. So love it. Good job on that. Teaser. <laughs> <laughs> well, for the, you know, for our listeners um, and stay tuned, cause we're going to hear more from Cassandra in a couple of minutes, but um, I get so excited about these books because they're really practical toolkits and we, we wanted to share stories, but we, I knew that part of the mission was to put real tools in people's hands that they could practice and have experiences with. Um, and our books are full of experts who do that brilliantly, but also are there for the, well, now what after it? And so I'm going to talk to you guys more about that um, at the end of our interview today. But um, Cassandra, thank you so much for being here. Thank you. Okay, Katie, you're up next. Tell us about your amazing chapter. My chapter is written for the woman who is in a job or in just in a phase or season of life that feels stuck, feels trapped. Anxiety is just rippling through every inch of your life. Um, there's a depression that is just weighing over your head and really helping you see that there is a light, that there is light in the big cave that you're in. Um, you just have to say yes to yourself. So I share my story about being in a corporate job that I was really good at, that I loved, but it, it destroyed my physical, mental, and spiritual body. Um, and in those little moments of alone time, that's when clarity start to really, started to really come in and became clear that this was not the path for, for me, that I couldn't sustain this until retirement. So um, yeah, it just, that, that's the story. It's, that's it's a powerful one. And I, <laughs> yeah. so you're making me think, I want you to go deeper into the place where we can help our listeners, which for me in this particular kind of story is, you know, it's, 
it's a lot easier when we get to look back and, and we're like, oh, that was a sign. That was a sign. I was feeling that. And, you know, you don't know it until you're like on air. So how will people understand it now? Like if they're in the middle of the things you described, but they really aren't seeing the signs, what was one of them for you now looking back in retrospect? I didn't care about life. I, um, I'm recalling a night in particular where I, I put our one-year-old daughter at the time to bed and I was like, oh, thank God that's over. Like, mm. like, thank God <laughs> she's alive. Like she's in her bed. Now I don't have to worry about that. Um, rolling my eyes and just not even hearing my husband when you exchange those pleasantries of how was your day? Right. And just being like, okay, I don't, I don't even care what his response is. Right. I was just totally disconnected, um, and on autopilot. So like if any part of my day didn't go how it did the day before, right. Like if anything wasn't like the whole routine, if anything in my routine got thrown off, I would go into a tailspin. Like it would be a total game changer for me the rest of the day. I would be miserable, um, angry, <laughs> like frustrated and nothing else would, you know, nothing else would go right according to plan, um, the rest of the day. And it was just, that was the decision that I would be making when one little thing would go off and with a young child, like anything's possible. <laughs> Thank so. you for being so vulnerable about that and just sharing with us because, you know, you give us permission to have our thoughts too, which get that intense a lot of the time, except for we just feel so bad about ourselves when we have them. We don't want to share with anyone. And that's, oh man, you guys, um, I'm having goosebumps about this because that's the power of this book that you're about to read. And this, this is going to change um, the way that you look at this and the, your ability to heal the opportunities you'll have. Um, Kitty, for you to be able to say some of those things, I'm assuming the part of the reason is you know what's possible in this juicy, sexy, amazing life that we can have. Like, you know, there's more to life and you, or you woke up to the fact that something's not right because I know there's more, right? Do you want to talk about that for a minute? Sure. Um, yeah, I'm definitely getting emotional bringing myself back into those places of my life. Um, but it was, it actually, and I wrote this in the chapter, it took a coworker. Like I said to a coworker one day, I just don't think I can keep doing this. Like I was commuting two hours plus a day, working way more than 10 to 12 hours a day. I was exhausted. I was burnt out. And I was like, I just don't think I can do this anymore. And she was like, yeah, I thought about quitting too, but here I am 25 years later. And I was like, <laughs> what? Like, and like, I laughed it off. Right. And we carried on to the next meeting and like, whatever. Right. And as I was driving home, I was like, is that really going to be me? Like I had been in the job for about five years at that point. And I was like, am I really going to stay here for another 25 years being like saying that to some other, like kind of brand new person <laughs> into the workforce? I was like, no. So it was like, that was a huge turning point for me, but it, I didn't know how to do it. And I actually didn't believe in myself enough that I could have a different life. It actually, so like that, that helped me go like, okay, I know I don't want that, but like, I don't know where to go from here. And so the next big turning point was a coach saying to me, um, <laughs> she's like, you know, you can do anything that you want. Right. And it was like the permission slip that no one else had ever told me in that way. Um, so it, it, I feel like that's one of my big purposes here is just to tell people like, you can do anything that you want, like anything, they, like the world is your oyster. Isn't that the saying? Like you can do anything. And, um, yes. yeah, it, it, it was those two turning points that were like, okay, but how, right. Cause we all get stuck in the how <laughs> I love it. Um, Katie, thank you for being here. Um, there's a saying, you know, the best coaches and therapists have the best coaches and therapists. <laughs> so I know you, you all have all spent a journey walking the walk and getting your own help and doing your own inner work. And I thank you for that. It's fun to play in the sandbox with people who have taken responsibility for their own energy 
and healing. I get to do that every day. I pinch myself about it. Pam, your turn. Tell us about your amazing chapter. Okay. Um, my following needs to. <laughs> Those are good chapters. Um, so my chapter is a little bit different twist because I am I am speaking to the adults, but on how they are um, dealing with their children, the children in their lives. Um, my chapter, it's, it's called You Are the Role Model and Guiding Our Children to Live a Confident Life. And um, just like Cassandra, as soon as Laura asked me if I wanted to be a part of this book, I just knew instantly I wanted to do it. I had turned down a couple others and it was like, but this one's like, oh yeah, this, <laughs> I have to do this. And part of it was because um, part of my job that I have created for myself is I'm a, I do hypnosis and the majority of my clients have issues from their childhood that they have carried through their entire lives. And it's all, a lot of it is just about their confidence and their self-esteem and their self-worth and that type of thing. And then it's like, well, why can't we take care of that? You know, make sure our children feel that as they're growing so that they don't have to take it with them into adulthood. They can bring in that confidence and that, that strong sense of worth. And the other part of it is because I had lost one of my grandsons to uh, fentanyl poisoning and um, with that, you really have to start looking to it. Why are these kids taking drugs in the first place? You know, why, why do they feel the need to do that? You know, what is their self-talk like? And then it just kind of shifts into, I feel like my whole career is shifting now because of his death, but, um, you know, it's just like, what can we do to help our children start their lives out feeling positive? And, you know, so I did some research on different um, experiments that have been done and, um, you know, and the, just the way that we talk to our children. I've, I've noticed with my, my youngest granddaughter, especially now, because of the way my own mindset is shifting, you know, the awareness of how I talk to her, how, um, how we all interact with each other. Um, and I don't know what else to add to that. <laughs> I mean, the awareness is everything, first of all. Yeah, but I wanted yeah. to tell you how impactful your chapter was for me, just thinking about my own kids and thinking about the day that my kids might have kids and how we're teaching them to practice awareness. I actually have a, an entire question for all of you about that um, because you're literally dropping ninja level moves of awareness in this book. Like we're, we're going to take it another notch here. And I want people to ask themselves, oh, am I even practicing awareness at all? Right. Because that's the first step. Right. Everyone has to kind of wake up to the fact that maybe they don't even have a practice. They don't even know what we're talking about yet. Yeah. Um, but that's the door. So, yeah. What else do you want to say about that? Um, well, I yeah, I mean, in my chapter, I end up saying, you know, awareness is key and then, and not to beat yourself up over the things that you do. You know, you think about it later. It's like, oh, why didn't I do that? Or why didn't I do this? You know but you become aware of it. And that, that is, it's key so that you can know what to do in the future or to help you shift along. It's not like we won't still do things that we're <laughs> like, oh, why did I do that? But it's still, it just brings that awareness out and it just helps everything shift. Well, um, thank you, Pam and all of you for you know, not only sharing that vulnerable story, but then stepping up with these master tools. Um, the the nuggets of awareness in this book are amazing. Um, people walk away with an entire toolkit of different ideas, and and that's part of 
this. We need all the voices. We need all the tools. Not one tool is going to work for everyone. Not one tool is going to work for the same person every single time. So we need to have the perspectives and the toolkit, right? Um, and it gets me into this next question for all of you. Katie, I'm going to start with you. It's important to use a holistic approach for men when it comes to mental health. Why, in your opinion? Mm. Well, I, I'm going to piggyback of what you were just saying, because part of my practice that I teach is self-devotion and so many people, and I want to get away from the word of self-care, right? Because I think it's overused and, and self-care can sometimes feel like, um, routine, right? And so, as you just said, like having this whole book and this whole toolkit of holistic practices that you can implement depending on what you need. So one of my, you know, my practices to walk you through your, your devotion to yourself is going to look different each and every day, depending on what your soul is calling you out for. And so I think having these holistic practices actually helps you embody the physical aspect of it, the emotional aspect, as well as the spiritual. And it's that mind body connection that I mean, that is the whole body. That is the holistic approach. And I think this book encompasses all of those practices that you can tap into each of those three areas to give you that, like, you know, I'm just seeing this, like, like seeing this whole picture, like this circle, just surrounding your entire body and being. Yeah. Um, this, this is a big deal to me. <laughs> these things you say. I just wrote down a question. I love I love the questions because they wake me up. Um, but what is the physical aspect of your mental health? Katie just helped me craft that question. Mm -hmm. And I hope people are like, huh, I don't know. <laughs> mm -hmm. Like, I'm not, I don't know, you know? And so I know Cassandra talked about it earlier, embodying and the body and that being a key. Um, so, you know, maybe she'll talk about that a little bit, but um, okay. So I got to go to Pam first for this one. Um, next, why holistic Pam, in your opinion? And kind of keep going from what Katie was talking about. Yeah. And well, I guess I'm going to kind of take a different shift on it too. I mean, holistic, yes, I truly believe we need to work on the body, mind, and soul. And I'm looking at it too, as because I'm focusing on what our children need our whole life. I mean, if you want to look at it as our holistically as our whole life from the time we're young, all the way through our lives, um, and uh, that's, I love that, Pam, because I, I think about holistic in a lot of different ways, you know, way back when, um, well, not way back, but I spent 30 years as a holistic physical therapist. I specifically branded myself with the word holistic in front of that so that people could understand that it's different. Why? I wanted them to ask me, why did you put that word there? Right. So holistic mental health, meaning whole life. I love that perspective because sometimes people are like, well, okay, mind, body, soul. Yes, I get that. But whole life. Oh, okay. I got to go back to some of those old things, the in between things, the now things. I have to look at the whole thing. Is mm -hmm. that kind of how you meant? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Super awesome. Um, Cassandra, what do you want to add? Why holistic in your opinion? I love that definition, Pam. <laughs> yeah. I just love it. I do too. And so I also, Laura, identify myself as a holistic psychotherapist and I have identified as a holistic psychotherapist probably for probably intensely for the last uh, decade of, of my experience as a therapist when I was introduced to mindfulness. And that totally changed my life. It changed my practice. It helped me look deeper into myself and to help my clients in a, a different way. And so traditionally as a therapist at that point, um, I mean, I think I had a I, I can speak more to this at some point, maybe if that is relevant to what we're going to talk about today, but 
Yes, holistic is in every aspect of your life and every time of our lives from the past to the present to future desires to future passions, purpose. And it, it's important to connect to that awareness, to connect to our thoughts, our feelings, and what we're doing about it. So taking action to support ourselves. And how can we do that in a way that honors who we are? Because what's holistic to one person isn't holistic to another. Definitely. So. I In my physical therapy practice, I knew one thing, and that was that if I wasn't looking at the whole body, the, looking at the body holistically, head to the fingertips, all the way down to the toes, all the way deep inside to the organs, I was going to miss a piece. And the myofascial system is three-dimensional head to toe. So like if you came in with neck pain and all I did was look here and forgot about looking, you know, everywhere below, I was going to miss a piece holistically looking at the body that way was important. But the other big one for me was if I sat that same neck pain client down and didn't ask them any questions about their life, like, hey, how's it going? And I didn't know that they had lost a loved one that week, or they had been through a job change or a move or whatever it is, mental, emotionally, I was going to miss a piece, even as the physical therapist. So, um, so those are just, I was adding my little two cents there to what holistic means for me, you have to look at all the pieces and incorporate the whole person in so many different ways all the ways you guys said is it's so important and um even more than important i want to get people excited like oh that's okay maybe there's something else possible here that i haven't even looked at yet i really want you to feel excited you listeners out there right about this possibility um okay we've already been talking about this so this is wonderful kind of segue into this next piece we've been talking about awareness we, and for me i'll call it feeling is healing right so feeling is an awareness practice and we've been talking a lot about this today already we could talk about it for the next five days i'm sure <laughs> um pam i'm going to start with you for this i you know helping people feel is a part of this for me helping them begin an, an awareness practice or enhance it or up level it from wherever they are it's important to me and i was wondering if you would just share a little bit about what your day-to-day -day awareness practice looks like give us a little window there's lots of breathing <laughs> yeah sometimes yeah i mean it's just like i do have to just tell myself stop and take a breath you know it's like Get back in the moment here and what's going on. Um, I do, I live in the country. I've got woods in the back and I get to watch the wildlife. And it's just like once in a while, you'll just see a deer or the turkeys and being aware of just being stopping and really enjoying that is part of my awareness. Because, you know, it's so easy because it's there all the time for me. So it's, I could take it for granted and just let it go. Um, but for me to right, to just really stop and pay attention to that and to watch, you know, like we'll sit out front and watch the hummingbirds and our hummingbird, I've heard people talk about hummingbirds were so nice, but ours, I don't know, they seem like they're fighting all the time. <laughs> <laughs> but we've watched them where they like they'll hide one will be hiding behind some of the flowers while another one is buzzing around and is looking for it and you know it's just i don't know <laughs> that's my life <laughs> nature is a big one for me too it's um observing nature but basking in the miracle of it is definitely part of my awareness practice so it's funny you mentioned the hummingbirds because <laughs> I have a couple in, in the backyard that show up every year as soon as I put that feeder out, you know? Yeah. Um, so far, they're pretty nice to each other, but <laughs> <laughs> I've heard things about hummingbirds too. Um, I looked <laughs> that up in my animal medicine book one, one day and they're all about joy. Mm -hmm. And so that, I love that too. Just like, ah, oh, yeah, joy's showing up today. All right, yeah. bring it in. <laughs> well, they do bring joy. <laughs> uh -huh. They definitely do. 
<laughs> um, all right, Cassandra, how about you? Give us a little window into your awareness practice. Ooh, yes. So I just did it this morning, actually. I have a routine uh, most mornings, you know, not 100%, but um, most mornings I wake up and I meditate. So I have some practice of traditional meditation to tapping meditation or EFT, the emotional freedom technique. And I just check in like one of the first things I do in the morning is I check in with myself. Okay. Did I sleep? Well, do I need like an activating meditation of some kind? Uh, do I need something just to kind of ease me into waking up? So I, really take a moment. I take a, about an hour in the morning to sit and uh, just sit in bed and just like sit with the moment. Um, but I'm meditating. I'm reflecting in journaling or writing uh, on what's going on in my head. Um, I do think a lot. <laughs> I have lots of thoughts and lots of feelings um, because I, I'm really anyone, anyone else <laughs> very connected to that. And it might yes. not all be wonderful. And, you know, it might be challenging. It might be tough for what, whatever reason it is. It might be, um, you know, certain situations we go through in life are just not, it's not easy. And so connecting with that and allowing it and allowing it to be even if it's not an enjoyable um, moment. And so, uh, and not judging that, having some self-compassion and just being with it. So, so that's what I do. I take, I take that time in the morning to check in and it just starts your day off in a really wonderful way, like supporting yourself and whatever it is that you need. So that's part, that's part of my awarenessing practice. I love that you're talking about the morning practice and because okay. it's the very, very beginning of your conscious day. Right. And so, you know, starting it off and I, I read a book by uh, Dr. Wayne Dyer um, uh, called Excuses Be Gone. <laughs> mm. I love that title for a book, <laughs> but um, he was talking about morning practice, starting and ending with even just five minutes. And so it really is, it's a big deal. You guys, it can set up the whole rest of your day. So I love that you're adding that in today for your awareness practice. Um, all right, Katie, how about you? What do you want to add about yours? As you both were sharing, I was like, I, I want to talk about my day yesterday. So I, <laughs> I met my friends and we went to a crystal and gem show, which was my first experience ever. But like, I was really excited. Like our week, my, my week before that was about serving all these other people. And I was like, this is my day. Like I was so excited. And so I brought a ton more awareness and this gets easier as you practice. It's like lifting weights, right? Like you can't start off lifting that 50 pound dumbbell. It's just not going to happen, right? You're going to strain your muscles. So awareness is a practice. So I've now been able to build it in just to in like each and every moment. It's like, we got, like, I got to see my friends. I got to hug. And I was like, oh, it feels so good just to be in the energy of my friends. Right. And then we got to the show and it was like, whoa, there's a lot of energy here. Like people, crystals, like, whoa, <laughs> who knew rocks could be so powerful. Right. <laughs> um, and so like, you know, we were beep bopping, just kind of following our intuition on what tables we want to go to. And then all of a sudden we, we all kind of looked at each other and we're like, we're ready to go. Like, and it was that awareness that we were like, all right, as empaths, we're, we're tapped. Our energy is, is tapped. It's time to go. And I don't know, then like just driving home, it was like, I just kept seeing a bath and I was like, okay, like, I get it. Like, that's how I want to recharge myself and like let go of the day. But in the bath, I brought that awareness of like, just brought myself back into my day. Like, wow, it was so wonderful to embrace my friend for that hug or like, wow, I really enjoyed my lunch today. That was really yummy. And like, just bringing kind of that reflective practice, you talk about like morning practice and evening practice. Like for me last night, that's what my evening practice looked like chilling in the bathtub, like just thinking about my day. Like, and it was just, it was so restorative. I really felt like I was good to go to bed after that. Right. Like I felt like 
I don't know, it actually reminds me of the movie, the Disney movie Inside Out, where like, you know, all the, at the end of the day, all the memories, like all the colored balls, like just kind of, it's like, yeah, we went through the range of motions and it was all good. Like I hit traffic and I was like, ah, like, you know, <laughs> but it's like, okay, but we get to move on and we get just to reflect. I think reflection is a huge part of awareness because it helped, as Pam was saying, like it helps you do differently next time. Right. And, and choose a different way next time, or, or just at least bring more awareness. We're not perfect. You know, none of us are. So yeah, I just bring awareness into all the different parts of your day can just those little light bulb moments. The thing I love about that the most, and actually the things that all of you talked about, you know, um, any moment is an opportunity I think one of the best books on meditation I ever read um, and I, I, you know, I'm cautious about using the M word meditation because people have an idea of what that's supposed to be. Right. But the book um, was about the fact that the mindfulness is the important piece. So you could be doing washing the dishes and meditate. You can be driving a car and meditate. You can be just in the moment, in your body, in your senses with what is going on, observing, noticing, and doing your best to not make any of the feelings mean anything. You know, watching your thoughts is part of that. I know that my mental health has improved the more I try not to make a feeling mean something. <laughs> you know, we're good at that, aren't we? Cassandra said, you know, I did, I think a lot and I'm like, yeah, I think there are a lot of us who, who do that. And as long as we know we are the, the, the overthinker, we can kind of rein it in a little bit and say, okay, what would be a little healthier? Well, let me just breathe. I think Pam talked about the, the breath first. Breath work is one of my awareness practices. A bath can definitely be one of mine. Journaling, yeah, you all named like all of the things. And I think all of us use multiple depending on when we need what we need because we're checked into what we need in that moment. And it can change, right? So it's good to, to um, remind people that can change. Meditation doesn't work for me every single day. Sometimes I need to go for a walk, you know, rather than sit. And so it's just good to know your body like that. Um, okay, let's, let's finish up today with this. Cassandra, what's the one thing you want our listeners to know? What's one simple thing about living their extraordinary life? I know it's a big question. So many. The first, <laughs> I'm just going to go with the first thing. Okay. That comes to mind and that's self-compassion. Mm. Yes. I like that one a lot. Because things will happen. You'll get curveballs. It's going to continue to happen in life. And so how you handle that can, it can just change perspective. It can change perspective and those really, really tough moments that happen and the joyful moments that happen and all of the others in between, right? So um, yeah, I think Katie said, you know, we are not perfect. And so that is definitely self-compassion practice and learning more about how you move through these situations in life and how you can support yourself and what doesn't work and what works and taking a walk instead of sitting meditation and just tuning in, like tuning into all those moments and having some compassion for yourself when it doesn't work and when you make mistakes and just go with it. Yeah. Perfect. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Cassandra. Mm -hmm. Katie, how about you? What's the one thing you want people to know? I kind of said it earlier, but I'm just going to reinforce it here is like, you can do anything you want. Like you are worthy of whatever it is on your heart. Um, you already have everything you need inside of you to go do that thing, right? That desire that is on your heart, believe in yourself enough like that just say yes to yourself and keep saying yes to yourself and know that anything is possible. I love it. I love the feeling of, of both of those. Mm, Cause this is about that feeling inside. We need to keep it burning. Right. Pam, how about you? What's the one thing you want people to know? Um, I'm just going to go with 
just to know that you are that role model for the children in your life, whether they are your children, your grandchildren, your neighbor, whoever it is. Um, you want to help them to see their strengths um, and their help them to build their confidence and how, um, <laughs> I guess, you know, spend time with them, you know, don't, uh, you know, shut off those phones and take your kids out for a walk or play a game, you know, just spending that time with them and helping them to feel like you really want them in your life. I like that one a lot. Shut off those phones, you guys. Go for a walk. <laughs> <laughs> I uh, I have to practice that kind of awareness daily with all the people in my life, my kids, my friends, the people who show up in front of my face. Um, I was so inspired by a talk I was at this weekend and she was talking about the the win and the win stands for what's important now. And when you wake up to the person in front of you, literally, the what's important now is the being in front of you, right? So I love that so much. And you're making me think of that. Um, to all of you authors, thank you so much for what you do in the world and for being here today to share it with everyone. Thanks, ladies. So um, you all listeners, you may have heard something today that gave you the goosebumps. Maybe it made you curious. Maybe, maybe you are nodding your head and have whiplash like the rest of us today, like to each other. Um, I have all of these author experts hooked up down below in the show notes for you. Their websites are there. So have an adventure. Take a little click today. See what they are doing in the world because it's a lot of awesomeness and in these book communities and these um, authors here today they're very generously there for you to answer a question to take the conversation to the next step to help you with what that next step might be for you right so uh, go ahead and explore you will not be sorry and we, you are all, of course, invited to our live stream book launch party for holistic mental health. It's going to be Friday, October 7th, 22, 10 a.m. Eastern. It's going to be on the face, um, Brave Healer Productions Facebook page. And I'm going to have all of the co-authors and lead author Laura Mazada there to share their wisdom. And of course, if you happen to be listening after that date, hop over to Amazon because that means the book is ready for you. You can Get your copy today and start that journey with the book. And lastly, today, everyone remember, your words change the world when you're brave enough to share them. So it's time to be brave. See you next time, everyone. Bye, ladies. <laughs>